here, it's not too messy. But um, we'll talk about it. Okay. Get better data by using this uh, That might be a good idea. Oh, I, I, I actually thank you. Do you? Thank you. Do you know how many times I'm going to thank yeah. you? <coughs> All I want to see that you change from what I was I doing. Mean, your, your face comes out, your smile is more prominent. It's <laughs> good. I mean, it's yeah, 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 yeah. It's good. Oh, my God, the weather. Dawn's coming? She'll be late. But She'll be late? So we'll have to start at 6 then? We'll start at 6. Nancy's just waiting. Six. Um, the camera. Are we live? Yeah. We are live. <laughs> I'd like to call the meeting to order December 4th. Roll call. Tom present. Uh, Marmion present. Bolagoff present. Fryer present. Approve of agenda, deletions, additions, changes. I move to approve the agenda. I second. second. Oh. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Approval of minutes, October 23rd. I found one typo on the second page, paragraph 8, where it's, it says, position going part-time should be part-time. Just a oh, I was just so upset about I know. <laughs> you can see I read it. I read it. <laughs> okay. Just a typo. Do you have a motion to approve as amended? So move. I second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Citizens communications? <laughs> I, I don't see anyone. Oh, Old business. The audience wants to say anything. Because <laughs> they can't, no, people on TV can't see back there. So if we pretend it's that there is, thing. that we're full. Yes. Old business, public art. Yes, um, this has been an issue that the Public Arts Subcommittee has been working on for a number of months. If you remember, uh, this idea was brought forward to the Commission. The Commission asked the City Council if they would like the Commission to review and draft a, or a potential ordinance. The Council gave you direction to do that. The Public Art Subcommittee has reviewed a number of different um, ordinances throughout the throughout the state, throughout the country, uh, to come up with what you see before you. They then had very vigorous conversations about a number of issues, uh, such as, you know, who should be charged if, it, if there was a public art ordinance, what dollar amount, um, what dollar amount on the buildings to make sure that you weren't capturing to people who were too small of a, you know, you don't want to, they did not want to capture the one-off house um, they wanted it more to be for people who were larger developers, and that's why there's different dollar amounts in the in this area. They also was conversations about pu public projects, and then there was also conversations about how is the money going to be spent, and some of the rules. Based on all of that, that was given to the city attorney to help draft the ordinance. Um, the city attorney recommended that a lot of the um, particular ways of how you spend the money, um, what is you know what the definition of public art is, um, can money be used for statues only or can it be used for space? All those things should probably be done more in a resolution so they can be easier changed. So what you have before you is more of the real core of a public art ordinance that talks about you know who would pay for public art. Um, at what rate they would pay for public art, as opposed to the nuts and bolts, which would be handled at a later date. And Bonnie and Kevin are both on the subcommittee, as, are, as is Karen, but if they want to, probably want to go more in depth than I have. 
about what's here. Go ahead. Well, I, I think you summarized it um, very well, Stuart, and, and I, I think one of the important things uh, to understand as you read this is there, there are lots of, of uh, smaller questions that this doesn't answer and that those would be handled in a resolution. The resolution being an easier thing to modify uh, once we went along. Should we get a public arts ordinance and it's in place and we start having some, uh, some funds come into it and we start utilizing that. Uh, to write uh, all the nuts and bolts of how we're going to do that into the ordinance would make it much more difficult to to modify it and and uh, and and change it as we went along and learned how to use uh, uh, public arts funding. Right. I mean, just to let you know, the difference between an ordinance and a resolution this is something that was talked about at the public arts subcommittee. <coughs> is that an ordinance? You have the first reading. Then you have a second reading 14 days later, and then after it gets approved by the city council, it then has a 30-day period before it goes into effect. So that way, mm -hmm. the public is does not like the does not like it. They can then put a referendum together to have it overturned and go to <coughs> vote. Whereas a resolution is just a vote of the city council by a majority at that point, and that can be changed. So if you want to have more flexibility, you do things by resolution. If you want to have things set in stone that is very hard to change, you do them by ordinance. And what the subcommittee really thought about was that how we collect money should be really set in stone and should be done by ordinance. But the definitions of art, how you want, may you want to spend money, may want to change in the future. So you really don't, you know, you don't want to put that in place today that's going to have an impact 30 or 40 years down the road because you don't really know what this community is going to be looking for 30 or 40 years. You know, if you put together an idea in the ordinance saying, oh, we're going to have the committee <coughs> to select art that looks like X, and 30 or 40 years down the road, that may not make sense anymore. But you are, it's hard to change at that point. And even the definition of art can, can evolve. Is, yes. is, is it an evolving uh, thing? I, I just do want, did want to say about the subcommittee, this was a, a really fun subcommittee to work on. I, I really enjoyed working with uh, fellow commissioners, uh, Bonnie and also Karen. And, and Stuart also played a really great role being the devil's advocate. You know, we'd kind of come in there and go, yeah, rah, rah, art. And he'd go, well, now did you think about Yes, I was very pro art. Yeah, oh no, pro art, but that really made us, really helped us to to think through all the different aspects of 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 uh, what can go wrong, or or, or how we were thinking, uh, how we were thinking about it. Um, the truth is about public arts ordinances that public art can be and 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 arguably should be a little controversial as it goes through a, a community process. That's part of the, the nature of it. And so in thinking about it, it was really good to have, uh, to have Stuart there um, questioning some of our assumptions uh, when they needed to be questioned. So it was really very much a, a fun subcommittee uh, to serve on, and, and I wanted to thank everybody uh, who was involved in it. Uh, Stuart, so where does this go from here? What's what's the uh, what do we need to do with this tonight, and okay. and how do we move forward with this? So, what would happen is if you approve this tonight to go back to the city council, we would bring it. You, I would write a staff report. We would bring it to a city. We have two different meetings going on tonight. <laughs> oh. um, sorry. The, we would bring it back to the City Council. The City Council would then, if they like it and don't have any more questions for the Commission, would send it to the Planning Commission so they could figure out where in the proper code it would go. And they would go through their public hearing process um, there. And then from the Planning Commission, it would go back to the City Council mm -hmm. for, adoption, for introduction and adoption as an ordinance. And. Uh, for those of you who are not on this subcommittee, uh, you know, we've examined this and we understand it on the subcommittee very well. Did you have questions right. about it? How about if I go through the different sections? Why don't you show them the, the information that we worked from all those other cities? I mean, we met a lot, and this is all the other cities in here, how, how they yeah. go about it. So we, I think we, we looked at possibly 20 other yeah. uh, cities, large and small, uh, uh, all different aspects of their, of, of their uh, uh, public arts ordinances and resolutions. 
uh, we, there was also a book in circulation. There were two copies. I loaned mine out to somebody. I don't know what happened to it, but it was about public arts and, and how it's done in different cities and how it was. Didn't Stuart have one? Stuart right. had one that he I put into his. circulation, and then I, I uh, you got one. bought one and read it and put that into yeah, circulation. It, was, it came from the Arts in America group, which you know looks toward looks to trying to put art and you know public art in place. Right. And that was that's the group. I mean, you know, it might be helpful if I just, you know, quickly run through the ordinance itself, so you can, you know, having not been on the committee, have a better understanding. Um, the purpose, you know, it's what it's a general purpose of why we think public, you know, why the committee thought the public art was needed. It goes through the definition, um, and as you can see, there's places where it's going to need to be codified, and that's what the blanks are. Mm -hmm. It talks about what de development costs are. So, you know, means construction costs for new private developments that do not include costs for hazardous materials abatement, land use planning consultants, you know, it's for the construction of the, mm -hmm. of the building itself. For public development, building development costs means no means public construction costs that do not include costs for park and landscape renovation projects. And as you know, when we do a park project, we look for public art. I mean, we did not just do our playground as a very blank, plain playground. We put in that feature of having it be blue, having the stars in there, and that would be what you would kind of expect from a playground from mm -hmm. an art perspective. I know we're having a conversation when we talk about the skateboard park, maybe doing murals or mm -hmm. doing something else in there. Mm -hmm. Well, in, in fact, in the, in, the, in the case of the skateboard park, uh, the amount that the skateboard park costs is too low to trigger any mandatory public art. However, if we had uh, funds in a public art fund in lieu of from previous developments, <laughs> then at this, at this point, when, as we discuss the skateboard park, we might say, let's add public art, and there would be funding. We would have the funding available to put a mural behind it, or skatable public art. There is, in, in some of the uh, uh, brochures that we looked at from, from skateboard park companies, there, was, there were whole sections on skatable public art, which were, were basically sculptures that were skatable and so on. So if we had a public arts ordinance had we al already had it in place with something like the skateboard park, we might be reaching into that fund to augment um, uh, skateboard park. But you never know. We, we'll it, probably, we'll, we they may, they may yet. They still have an aspect of that. Yeah. Because um, that's what our community cares about. Um, you know, it goes on to say pipelines. You know, it's hard to figure out how you put public art underground. <laughs> and that's uh, the idea of the pipelines. You know, power <coughs> transmission lines. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, it goes on and talks about um, for public development shall, shall include bridges and overpasses. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you think about the Tunnel Avenue Bridge, you know, that may be, that may have be an area where you would have wanted public art. The challenge when you do something like that is, you know, the bridge was 90% funded by the state and the state doesn't fund public art, so that would have to be, you know, something taken out for, by the city. But again, if we can get money from other places, that might be useful. Um, the implementation guidelines, that's what we were talking about before, is how you're going to implement it is going to be a separate resolution. Um, then, you know, the, we were going to set up a public art fund, so that way the money would be accounted for separately from other city funds. Uh, and then it goes through the contribution, contribution requirements. So private, non-residential, and non-live work building. So if it was a million dollars through five million, they shall contribute at least one percent to the fund, $5 million and above would be at least 1% of the building development cost to the public art fund as an in lieu contribution or at the developer's um, discretion, they could do 1% of their costs into in public art um, directly. But there would still be a process for determining how that art was selected. For residential projects, that's, you know, um, li uh, residential live and work developments with 10 through 20 units shall contribute at least one half a percent, <coughs> and then above 20 units would be 1%. So it really gets rid of that small individual build building. So it's really the larger developments that are being looked at. Um, <coughs> then it also says private residential live work developments above $10 million, regardless of the number of units. So if you have one person who can build a $10 million house, they would still contribute to the overall public art in the community. Um, 
then public development, it's those that are over $500,000, it would be half a percent. And then there's the implementation guidelines for this chapter, and then that's it. There's waiver conditions and violations, so still, you know, normal kind of stuff. We were pretty thorough. Yeah, I was. I would say that the subcommittee, you know, there was probably four or five meetings on it. Oh, at least, yeah. At least, at yeah. least five, maybe yeah. more. Yeah, maybe and, more. And, you know, they looked at, you know, we did bring in pictures of public art. We didn't, you know, we were hoping to be able to go visit, and we never were, we never did get to that, but I think that as we go through the implementation guidelines, mm -hmm. that might be a better, that might, we'll try and pick that one up again. Mm -hmm. The similar city was Emeryville, and we mm -hmm. were going to go visit them. Yeah. And, and we took a lot of this uh, in the end. We looked at Emeryville carefully. Emeryville is a small town. Mm -hmm. uh, their public arts ordinance has been in place since 91 or 92. And uh, when they put it in place was before they had that big wave of development that Emeryville has had. I think Emeryville is now about 10,000. When they put their public arts ordinance in, they were only about 6,000, mm -hmm. population 6,000. And I think one of the unique characteristics of Brisbane is we are a very small town, but we are faced with uh, big city development uh, projects coming down, coming down the pike. Mm -hmm. And it's not just the Baylands, which of course is the obvious one. There is also still things out at Sierra Point. And I think in the next 10 to 20 years, we will probably see, see redevelopment in, uh, in uh, Crocker Industrial Park as well. So it, would have, it could have big impacts on all of that. So, yeah. And as I said, the next step is to go back to you know, council, let them know how you answer the questions, what you, what you came up with. Um, my hope would be, you know, maybe we can do that in January. Mm -hmm. Um, and then from there, have them direct the planning commission to take it up at their, uh, you know, when they have the ability. And then it'll go back to council after that. And then you'd start working on implementation guidelines. So the next step is? Go to city council, if you approve it tonight. That's what I was going to say. You have, would would you have implementation to guidelines come, come from our subcommittee, from this commission as a whole, or is that something where, where we would want... Um, larger community participation or do we come up with a draft for that and then invite the public to 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 come in and, and uh, 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 give their input and also be educated about you know how this what what the mechanisms and are, are and how it works and so on how what's the best way to proceed with that or are we getting a little ahead of the game because no, no, the city I, I council mean, needs to look at, at what we've done so far? I mean, council does need to look at it and make sure that they're comfortable with, the, with collecting the money. Right. How, you know, first you have to make sure you can collect it before you can spend it. But I think it really comes down to the commission's desires and what part of the purpose is of what we're doing. Um, the most efficient way to do it in the quickest way would be to have the subcommittee, you know, do the research, come back to the commission, and then go to council and just get it done. That would be the quickest. The resolution way. part. Right. Mm -hmm. However, um, you know, I would I have I have argued over a number of years in my career that government isn't always about being efficient. It's about being, you know, more of it is about being effective and doing what people want us to do. So, you know, I would say that there should be some process for having the public come in, um, and more so than just, you know, as much as we have 40 people sitting behind me tonight <laughs> that you can't see on TV, I mean, beyond, this, you know, just saying it's going to be at a, count, at a Parks and Recreation Commission meeting, I think we should really take a, you know, I think there's really um, a real good purpose for having inviting people to meet with the subcommittee. Mm -hmm. I mean, very similar to what happened with the playground. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think the playground really benefited from having people who are users of the playground meet with the subcommittee. I mean, this is the same process that we would talk about with the skateboard park, mm -hmm. that we're not going to design a skateboard park in a vacuum, that we're going to design it with the people who are going to use it. Mm -hmm. And it's really tough to um, develop the implementation guidelines with the people who are the artists themselves who are going to use it. Um, because, you know, we may not have a lot of them in town. We have some who may benefit from this. 
but you know we don't you know we may not have a lot of them but we do have a lot of people in this community who are very interested in art who are very interested in the community are very interested on the impact of art in the community uh, you know we see that you know through live at mission blue we see that through you know the shakespeare festival put you know the shakespeare play put on by the women's club we see that with the talent that we we draw during the artist evening of sharing so it really might make a lot of sense for the subcommittee to meet with a number of people as you're developing the implementation guidelines and making sure that they are that the community is on board mm -hmm. yeah I, I would absolutely agree with that uh, uh Stuart, that that at some point uh, uh and and certainly with the implementation that that the more community that's involved in it the more they sign on to it the more engaged they are in it the more successful it will be when the time comes to to start implementing right. we actually have some money to spend mm -hmm. when we're talking about our first mural or whatever the the, the the community art project is i think having people in on the ground floor of of how those decisions are made helping us to decide how those decisions right. are made is is a, is the is definitely the way to go and the city and the subcommittee also discussed that idea during the selection process mm -hmm. that maybe when you're doing the selection of public art you might have um, you might narrow it down to two or three different um, ideas and go through a public process for the selection mm -hmm. of the public art and that might be part of the implementation guideline so yeah I mean I would you know what you might want to do is draw you know maybe gather some ideas as a subcommittee and vet them through a public you know more of in, inviting the public in at that point or the other way you could do it is say, okay, let's start with the blank slate with the public. What what's the parameters the public would want to see? And then say, okay, let's go back as a subcommittee and find out how we can do that. Those kinds of things. What other cities have done? Right. I, I think, and and you know, I, I have had some discussions with with uh, with other artists about this as this process has gone through. And and I one of the things that I discover is that there there is a bit of education that has to that has to happen. Uh, and that this this public vetting process would also serve as an education of what this is and what this is not. Uh, there's a lot of of, uh, of interest and and pressure to try to figure out how to make this uh, benefit substantially performing arts, and it's not. That's not what it is. It's not about performing arts. As much as I would personally love to have the spigot turned on for Live at Mission Blue and you just, you know, that's not what it's about. Although we did in our subcommittee look at a couple of ways where where it, uh, and it's I believe it's Santa Rosa that had found a way to open the door slightly to that. Um, and so so there are some, some basic educational things that have to happen in that dialogue when, when, the, when the public starts to get involved. So I would think that, that maybe there's something in between just opening it up and with a blank slate, I think maybe that's maybe that the subcommittee comes with a comes to that first meeting with a, a basic structure and that could be uh, the basic architecture without the details filled in uh, and and then that's um, discussed why we came up with that maybe changed the basic structures changed and then from that as the as the public gets a better understanding of what it is and what it isn't uh, uh, starts to help us fill, fill in the details of of how it will be implemented to the chair I this morning had reason to try to identify the artists in town and I talked to people about who would I contact? Who, who recognize is recognized as, you know, the organizer of the artist in town or a person that you would contact or something? And I was given a name, and I thought, you know, there are other artists, and I'll bet that they're not connected uh, in a lot of ways. And this might be an opportunity for there to be artists in residence, so to speak, as a group. They might themselves be interested in having a group of artists in residence. I know they have arts and eating of sharing and so forth. But having a group of artists in residence that then might also help us by wanting to uh, put on something special where they would donate money to this particular fund. So you have your seed money to get started like for your murals for the skateboard park or whichever. Um, 
because I think there are a lot of people that are doing their own art but are not connected to uh, whatever the art list is at this at this particular mm -hmm. time because there doesn't seem to be an organized group. I don't think they meet as such and I think this would be an opportunity for them to maybe choose to do so if it were offered. Well, well, I, I think you're right in that there are some artists in the community who are not connected. Um, but there is also a, a sort of a core group of artists, and, and um, right. we know each other, and there, there, is, a, there is a ringleader <laughs> behind them who, with whom I had a conversation just yesterday about this. She's been following it through. And actually, the genesis of this, of this public arts ordinance came from a lunch that I went to where some of the key artists, and, and you're right, not everybody, and there are artists who are not not yet plugged in. Um, and we talked about an arts ordinance, and you know, would that be a good idea, and what is it, and what isn't it? And, and that was just as I was thinking about coming on the commission, and I said then, okay, well look, I'll, I'll see if I can't get this idea in the hopper. Uh, so there is, an, there is a, a loose arts organization, but even within my colleagues on that, we are aware that there are also people that aren't plugged in. And I think that um, a larger discussion about an arts ordinance and the arts in Brisbane would be a great opportunity to bring more of the artists into the, into the mix, those who aren't currently plugged in. That'd be great. Yeah. But the first step is moving this on to the okay. yes. city council. council. If the city council says we don't like this idea, then does that take a motion? It does take a motion. I make a motion to approve the municipal art. What do we call this? Public art ordinance, as written and sent to the city council. I second it. All in favor? Aye. 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 And I'll let council. I'll let the commission know when I can get it scheduled and write a staff report in. Okay. I'll probably send the staff report around to the subcommittee to make sure that they're comfortable with what I, how I interpreted their thoughts. And I just want to make a comment, Jamie. I think years and years ago, when I first moved here, there was a group of um, some. We kind of want to call them artists in residence. They used to meet at this one woman's house. There wasn't very, very many of them, but there was a. Oh, I was involved. That's how I got involved. For a while, there was a lot. Was it Ann, Annie Costello? Oh no no no. And this oh, was this, I mean. This is later then. Yeah. This this, this was this Beth was, Grossman's. Uh, no, this was uh, way before uh, Beth. Um, and um, there there was a guy that. Um, lived up in Sierra Point, who was a, a kind of a well-known artist. He used to have um, a studio. In fact, my old neighbors bought, used to buy art from him, and he, you know, he moved away. I think he moved to New Mexico, but that was, you know, 20, 23 years ago. It was a small, yeah, because I remember that. It's just a small cluster of them. Well, it's nice to have that history. Yeah. Um, I just know several people that are artists, and I don't yeah. see them as connected, and I see that they have beautiful things. Yeah. Occasionally, they might show up as part of a show, but I, when I was trying to identify artists in town uh, for a particular reason, I went looking about, you know, whom should I contact besides those I know of? And um, I got thinking about, you know, is this a time to uh, have people thinking about having an artist in residence, resident artists uh, group or program if they're interested in some way advertise that and then have them be, you know, in on what's going on. They sort of would be more of a collective group and they, they might have some impetus and interest in supporting this financially at some point. I mean, what we, I mean, what we can do when we get to the implementation is at that point in time, you know, we, we'll, we can put a sign up on the mm -hmm. sign boards, and which usually generates most people in town mm -hmm. driving through, and they can yeah. recognize that there's a meeting to talk about public art. Um, you know, the, over the years, there has been a very diverse group of people who have participated in the artist's evening and sharing, and um, you know, my, my wife is part of that group of people, um, and there's probably, you know, my guess is there's probably 40 or 50 artists that we know of 
in this community. So it's fairly wide ranging, and they do different kind. You know, there's photographers, there's quilters. Mm -hmm. You know, with my wife, it's written word. There's there's uh, filmmakers. I mean, it's just a huge, very wide you know, harpsichord, yeah. harpsichord makers. I mean, it's a diverse. Yeah. It's a very diverse. It's a, group. It's a very the diverse. Mm -hmm. Has yeah. you know knows and you know the, yeah. the artist group is connected with those. So there's the singers that are in town, and there are people who even you know on the ancillary side of it who do, um, you know, production type of work in mm -hmm. town. And those people have all, at one, you know, probably, as I say, 40 or 50 people have come through the artist's evening of showing in one form or another. Mm -hmm. And, you know, when you talk about having a town of 4,000 and having, you know, 40 or 50 people in town being well-recognized as artists, that's 1% of the town. It's, you know, it's a fairly large number. That's a healthy percentage actually right when you think if yeah. you thought about san francisco you know it'd be trying to get like seven thousand people together mm -hmm. and it would not be easy so yeah i mean I, and I think that's one of the benefits of being in a small town mm. as well but we will we will reach wider than just the people that we know we will do other ways of communicating but i will bring it forward now thank you next we have community pool do we want to put that off I, the next I, meeting well Don had asked for information as it related to usage. Um, and Nancy today was putting together information as it relates to usage. Um, and we're not quite done with this calendar year, so it might make sense for us to wait through the 2013 mm -hmm. to talk about residents versus non-residents usage and rates. The other issue that we found was that the way we collected data in 2011 when Julie was the supervisor, and the way that we've collected data since Julie left in April of 2012 is slightly different. And when we were putting the numbers together, um, it looked as if we were down in use in 2012 versus 2011. In, rea in reality, we're not. Very, you know, we might be down a thousand people, maybe, but it was because of the numbers we've collected is different. Mm -hmm. So we've got to go back and mm -hmm. compare apples to apples and not quite apples to pomegranates. <laughs> um, so it would be better if we can just put this off. Okay. But I'll just say the basic idea of what Steve was trying to do in the memo was to talk to the idea of what we've done with rate increases over the years. So if you remember, if, from a historical perspective, the pool opened in 2000, right before I got here. Um, I got here in March of 01, and I think it had opened in the summer of 2000, is if, I'm, if I have my history correct. And we set rates. And we set rates for the daily drop-in. We set rates for punch passes. And we set rates for monthly passes. Um, since that time, every year, um, we have done rate increases of inflation. So, you know, if inflation is 3%, we haven't raised the rate for the daily punch for the daily drop in because when you you know if you have a three dollar daily drop in and you do a three percent rate increase you get to 309 it doesn't make much sense until it happens for a long period of time um, but if it's a punch pass and it's forty dollars and you raise it a dollar twenty you can raise it a dollar so what has happened over the years is that the punch passes and the monthly passes have gotten out of sync with our daily drop-in numbers. So what Steve was tr trying to do in here is say, okay, let's try and re-rationalize our daily, we're having issues with live streaming. The internet um, connection is not really doing great for us at the moment. Hmm. And that's why people are coming in and out. Um, but it's still on TV and it's still being recorded, so don't worry about that. Um, so anyway, what the... So what he was trying to do is say, okay, let's try and figure out how many punch passes, how many, if you're going to get a 15 punch pass, what kind of a discount should you get versus just a daily drop-in? If you're going to do a monthly pass, how many, month, many drop-ins should it be worth? Um, and then there was a comment, should we, at, I think at the last meeting there was a comment, should we get rid of monthly passes? Uh, I will tell you that at the last city council meeting, one of our monthly users and it wasn't me. 
Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but uh, so there was another monthly user who had said is if we got rid of the monthly pass as often as he comes, he would be spending upwards of a hundred dollars if he had to do it as a drop in right. um, a, a month, and therefore other things would become a lot more appealing. Appealing. Mm -hmm. So the, if yeah, I would recommend that we, in some fashion, keep the monthly passes, but we really try and think of how to rationalize. You know, a punch, a 15 punch pass or a 12 punch pass is worth X number of drop-in visits, and you get a discount. A monthly pass is worth an X number of drop-in visits, and you get a bigger discount because you get more money up front and you get more usage that way. And that's what Steve was trying to do. I hope that yeah. helps explain. Well, yeah, just reading some of this, it's, it was like, oh my God, it's like reading a math problem. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's where that, so, so that's what he was trying to do yeah. in this, and what he was trying to do is then come up with what he thought might make some yeah. rational sense of it all. But as I said, the other question was how do we? How many people have used the different punch passes? How many people use yeah. the pool? So if we could put this off till January. And that way we'll show you the 2011 usage, 2012 usage, and 2013 usage. Yeah. Um, so that way you could at least see the numbers as well. Um, I just have one question on uh, punch, pla uh, punch passes, um, on the, which he shows here now, the 12 and 15. Is, is there a no expiration date? There is no expiration on, date on, on those, but... There is an expiration date for the monthly. You have to yes. use that up in the month. Yes. Okay, that's why I just wanted to clarify that. Yeah, and it's actually in the month you buy it. Right. And we don't track it like, oh, I bought it on the 5th of the month, therefore I get the 5th of the next month. No. Right, right. If you buy it in December, you got to use it in December. Right. becomes really interesting when I take right. vacation time. Yeah. Because I have to think, okay, how many days of vacation am I taking this month, and yeah. is it worth to buy the monthly or... But I just wanted to know about that 12 and 15. Yes. Yeah. And what he's just giving is different options yeah. Yeah. on how to do that. But we will bring that back next time. Okay. Next I have goal setting. Yes, this came out of the joint meeting with the city council last time where the city council subcommittee recommended that you know there should be some kind of goals of annual report from the Parks and Recreation Commission to the City Council and how well you've met your goals for the year. I, I, and then we talked about it after that, that if we're going to do an annual report about how well we met our goals, we probably should have goals yeah. to meet. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Okay. So the idea was that maybe some take, maybe not during the commission meeting in January, but maybe taking a different, some, you know, maybe a couple of hours at some other time to, you know, more workshop what the purpose of Parks and Recreation Department is, who are you? Who are we trying to serve? You know, um, or it's a real, it's a real interesting question. I know Jamie's, you know, has brought up the issue. You know, Kevin has brought up the issue. Don has brought up the issue. You know, the seniors. I mean, who is it? You know, are we trying to serve everybody in the community? Are we trying to serve different segments of the community? Are we trying to provide all segments, all things? You know, what can we do being in the community that we are? We used to meet out at the marina and on we a can Sunday. Mm -hmm. And it was informal. We just sat around a table. Yeah. And that might even work. Yeah, I, I think a workshop to, to mm -hmm. I mean, these are interesting questions, yeah. and a workshop to, to, to have time to just discuss those. Only that. Yeah, those yeah. larger, broader philosophical discussions mm -hmm. would yeah. probably well, be, be very valuable. Meeting, but I'm, yeah. I'm sure you'd have as many people showing up to that one as you have showing up to this yes. one. Yes, it's always a public meeting, but it, it's informal. It's informal. It's more around the table. You know, we can bring food mm -hmm. in. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When you break bread, it's always, yeah. you know, more enjoyable. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think we should plan that sometime after the first of the year? Sure. Do, um, so the next question, which is an interesting one. So there are people whose uh, time is up mm -hmm. and are going to be reappointed, at, hopefully in January. I hope we're going to get it. I think Kevin, I think your, mm -hmm. yours is expiring. Mm -hmm. I believe Karen. Karen's is expiring. And Dawn's is expiring. And then obviously... No, Dawn's is not expiring. She's, she's on a four-year... I went over that list today. I yeah. Have to I thought you should come in two years list. only. I came in on two years, and Karen did. Okay. There were four spots open. And Kevin is obviously Kevin is not here. Or yeah, Karen. Karen. No, not Kevin is not. Not oh, Kevin. Oh uh, well, I am. Chris. I am sometimes. No, I was thinking Hart. <laughs> Absolutely. It's not you. It's not you. It's Hart. 
I think and it's Chris Hart. Chris, Chris. Yeah. Chris isn't here, so he, his spot would yeah. be available as well. Replaced him. All right. No one's replaced him yet. Is that going to be announced? Isn't it years? Yeah, it, be year uh, it, it is in the in the right. city news. It's, it's in the city the news. City news oh. that and I th and I thought that the deadline for application was the 31st of January. Okay, so we probably should do it ahead of that then. Right. Okay. I didn't read the city news. I'm, I read it when I proofed it. I didn't read it when I got it at my house. So, is there a is there other than Super Bowl Sunday in January a good Sunday to? <laughs> Makes no difference to me. Wait, let's not Super Bowl Sunday. Not Super Bowl Sunday. Not Super Bowl. Sunday. No, what not is Super, Bowl. Super Bowl Sunday. What's actually? I think Super Bowl Sunday's in February. I was going to say it's February. Oh, really? Where's the calendars? I have all Sundays open in January. That's why I suggested Sunday, because mm -hmm. most people don't have that much going on. So we probably should not do it around Martin Luther King's birthday, which is probably the January 20th. So we should probably choose, I would think, either the 12th or the 26th of January. So that way you, you're avoiding the that New Year's Eve weekend and the school holidays mm -hmm. but you know I think the 12th or the 26th of January might work I'm open you have any preference no nope. anybody preference you have a preference to I, no I don't the 26th works better for me okay so we will schedule that for January 26th and that's our workshop yep at what time um, what time is good for the Commission we usually do it like 11 o'clock and then break and have food or whatever, okay. have brunch. So you want to do like, a, plan it for 11 to 2? Yeah. With, a, with an hour, with mm -hmm. some time available for food? Yeah. Okay. And where will we meet? You want to do it at the marina? Yeah. I will check to see if I can get that conference room. That works well, that's why I suggested that. I mean, if not there, we can maybe do it up at Mission Blue around in that small Castaños. Is it mm -hmm. Castaños? Uh, the conference room? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is it called Castaños room? Castaños. Yeah, okay. And that's 11 a.m. Yeah, I think it is. See how much I pay attention. Okay. Good, how are you? Not p.m. <laughs> yeah, 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. <clears throat> Otherwise, we're in Scotland. Yeah, get my we're, we're on my kids' time. In get my so we just scheduled a meeting, Don. For January 26th from 11 to 2, which is a Sunday. Okay, that's Richie's birthday, but... Oh, uh oh should we go to the 12th? Oh, do you want to do the 12th instead? Oh, that's my husband's <laughs> birthday. That's why I said the 26th. <laughs> Fine, Richie, Big Rich can handle Richie's, whatever we do for Richie's party. Okay, 11 to 2, got it. It's, okay. a, it's a workshop. It's a workshop to talk about the goal setting. Okay, got it, yep. That's why we scheduled it on a Sunday as opposed to a normal day. Sounds good. Right, so you're check, you're I'll right. check with the marina. You'll check it. Yeah. And we approved the public art ordinance as well to go to council. Oh, okay, yeah. And we're going to bring back the pool fees later in January. Thank you, Stuart, for the update. Okay, great. Sorry about tardiness there. Yeah. Next, I have chairperson. I don't have anything in particular other than one person came to me today and wanted to know why the lights are on 24 hours in the, the park behind the community center. They, don't, they should be on a timer that they go off. During the day, they're on. Oh. During the night, they're on. We're trying to keep the people behind them awake all the time. That's <laughs> why this person came to me. <laughs> I was, I'm assuming I know who that person is. Yes, you do. Is they did not come to me last night when they were here. Is it my friend? Yeah. <laughs> no one? Hello. <laughs> I know he's watching. <laughs> oh, well. So, I mean, it, I'm sure there's a timer system or something that it could go uh, I, I will check with the people who have done the park. Okay, good. That's all I had. Okay. Then we have subcommittee meetings. The only big one that I remember is the teen services. And we also had uh, facilities. facilities. Oh, that's right, we did. Yes. Mm -hmm. I sat through that one, too, and I yes. remember. Yeah. 
And then we had the sustainability. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Uh, should we start with the facilities? Uh, so we had a facilities subcommittee. This is following a uh, discussion from the last um, council meeting, or council meeting, uh, uh, commission meeting, uh, to talk about the, the, the orchard behind the um, community, uh, community yeah. garden, the community garden, and then the, the, uh, the little small triangle in front. And um, uh, Susan, Tyler, and Peter were there. Uh, this was their chance to kind of bring forward their interests and concerns about that uh, uh, pie-shaped piece of property. And I think what we came out of it was, um, one of the big concerns was that the orchard, which is they've been developing sort of ad hoc over the last couple of years is uh, at the point where it's starting to bear fruit, no pun intended. And how is that going to be handled um, in the future? Uh, people are welcome to it. Uh, there's some problems with people coming in and uh, uh, harvesting it wholesale and, and uh, so on. And I think what came out of that was the potential of having a, uh, a signboard um, put up uh, in that spot uh, Stuart, you did some research on different kinds and sent emails to the subcommittee. The subcommittee, and I think I wrote back that um, three, the, the three, the the three corn, the three sided sign. Well, I, I like that. Yeah, you like that one. I thought maybe that that uh, that that should be something that uh, that Tyler and uh, and Susan and Peter should be right. So we're getting prices on the three on the three sided sign before we do that again. Before we we bring it back to yes. them and say, you know, here's what we came up with, uh, what do you like, and so on. Yes. Uh, anything else about that meeting? Um, no, we, um, God, I'm trying to recall. I mean, I, the other thing is I think they're very happy, I mean, they're, they're yeah. very, they feel very self-sufficient. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That there wasn't really much of a need for the city to, to step in and do metal or, or right. otherwise. They just want, my understanding is they just really wanted a sign that would really lay out some of the rules. Right. And also let people know what kinds of fruit were available for picking at what periods of time. So yeah, that way people they aren't even, picking unripe fruit. Yeah, they even, I, I believe they even said they, they'd inst install it themselves. I yes, don't know I think they would. may have said that, but we'll, yeah. we'll see. Right. Is this increasing the space for them? Well, they they have taken. Uh, I mean, they're using the space that's available. There was discussions at the meeting about maybe um, doing um, having the committee that meets with the open space and ecology committees mm -hmm. clean up restoration day right. um, to work on some of the restoration down along Quarry Road as well right. that may increase some of the space available then for some of that area um, behind and that would go all the way back to Lipman right that so. would be a really good thing because if uh, if you walk quarry road there's a section just beyond where the trees are the fruit trees and the bees uh, that often have um, transient people hanging out there teenagers a lot of the beer bottles that you find broken in that area are coming right from that area. Right. So that, that was another one of those things that was discussed is that maybe working, when we do the Restoration Day, having the Parks and Recreation Commission's subcommittee that meets with the open space to suggest mm -hmm. the Quarry Road mm -hmm. as an area to clean up. Yeah, and there was some discussion back and forth of whether, whether that would be a good use of their time or not, and I don't remember where they landed on that. I think we said, well, well the interesting let's have that is, discussion. The interesting thing is Peter is the one who's going to drive it. Right. Yeah. Ultimately, because okay. Peter's the one we turn to to help us with our restoration work. Right. So if he thinks it's a good idea, we'll probably do it. If he doesn't think it's a good idea, he'll probably do it on another, in a different fashion. Right. Because Peter is the one who does a lot of restoration work for our, for the city mm -hmm. on his own time, and yeah. we very much appreciate that. Yeah. And Jamie, I know that one time on one of our lists, uh, it was talked about putting light, lighting down there. Mm -hmm. on that quarry I think that, isn't that on our, yeah, it's that's on our it. capital projects list yeah you know to especially now that, that we have that. darkness so early yeah. people are getting home from work they want to walk their dogs uh, they try to work in walk in groups but it doesn't feel as safe to them and it, yeah I think that was the reason I think that was the reason it was brought up well that and there was some activity that was going on there that you know right. needed to be 
moved out. So, mm -hmm. the other thing along those lines of the fruit trees, we have a lot of fruit trees in town. I don't know if this fits or where we can fit it or give it consideration, but we have a lot of fruit trees in town where the fruit goes fallow. Mm -hmm. It eventually falls. The, the birds will pick at it until there's they're just it's lost. And um, you know, if somebody has a good idea about how that can be harvested and uh, put into a food bank, or uh, I know that uh, Peter Styler uh, makes collections that he then distributes to people in the community. I think if we had a notice out to people who have trees, and if we had a, a group that were in some way insured and the people who own the property and the trees wouldn't feel responsible, somebody getting hurt on their property picking the fruit, they might be happy to have some of that fruit down because it, I've seen it for 20 some odd years now where it just stays on the tree till it just drops and rots and they're cleaning it up. And there are a lot of people that could make very good use of that. So uh, wherever that can be someday and however it can be, if we can give some impetus to utilizing um, these trees because they're growing all over town and they're, they're laden with fruit. Talk, I mean, Wendy's working with a group of citizens who are trying to find um, ways to help uh, each other. Mm -hmm. And that might be a good project for, those, for that group of people. So let me, let, me, let me mention it to Wendy. I mean, they're thinking of things like, you know, driving seniors mm -hmm. to doctor's appointments and stuff, but that's another area that might be an interesting... Is that the village? Aspect. Yes. Yeah. So, I mean, that might be an interesting thing mm -hmm. for the village yeah. group. The village people to uh, yes. pick up. <laughs> and what other subcommittee? Um, well, we had our joint meeting with the, the teen city service. council's te teen services and city council uh, facility subcommittee. Did you want to speak to uh, that about the the skate park? Skate park, yeah. yeah. The um, teen yes, we met, and in fact, last night the city council even commented on it to uh, Ray Miller. And we met here, and we had a room full of people, I don't know, um, I don't say about 10, 10, 12 kids from the age 12, 14 came and spoke. And they, um, both groups heard their desires and their needs about the skate park and two of the council members then did go over to the um, existing skate park and looked at some of um, the needed repair that needed to be there until we decide really or the city council decides what they're going to do um, with that skate park if the funds um, will be allocated. We did ask for the seven thousand uh, dollars to go to city council for a design, construction design of a skate park. And they are going to meet on... On the 16th. The, si the 15th or 16th? 16th. 16th. And that will be on... I've, I'm in the midst of writing that agenda report, okay. and that will be on the agenda for the 16th. Yeah. But overall, it was a good meeting. Uh, Karen um, facilitated it. She was very well um, doing that. And it, 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 the public was here, and uh, they... They were all on board. And to let you know about the maintenance, you know, staff went over as well the next day, and we've talked and we talked about it. Mm -hmm. And we're gonna um, look to contract with somebody in town to do the, you know, what would be the necessary repairs right now, and then on a regular basis yeah. look at it to make sure that it's, yeah. you know, it stays in the shape that it's, you know, yeah. that's usable yeah. until a decision is made. Yeah, I, I just wanted to add to that about the meeting. I thought it was really a great meeting. We had mothers of Brisbane out in the lobby with a hot chocolate and cookies, mm -hmm. uh, a, a fair number of parents and young kids. There was probably 30 or so total, mm -hmm. plus these 10 to 12 uh, uh, middle school kids in a semicircle, each one of them getting up and speaking. And, and in fact, the only ones principally who spoke were just these middle school kids. And it was really a, a heartwarming um, uh, a moment, civic moment, I, I thought, to see them uh, stand up. Some were shy, some were very articulate, uh, some were shy, and then once they got going, they kept adding more. And it was really, really a, a, a really wonderful um, uh, public meeting, I thought. Now I was getting worried I had to close it down pretty soon, the skateboard park, from what they were saying. 
then we went and looked. It wasn't nearly as yeah. bad as they But it was interesting, it too, out. that they even then brought up about the teen center. They even asked us, why did you close the teen center? Yeah, we got some, we got some uh, feedback from the kids themselves about the, about the yeah. teen center. And so we guiltily, we felt guilty for closing it down. But <laughs> anyway, it was a very good meeting. Yeah. Yeah. The other subcommittee meeting? Um, do you want to say anything about the sustainability? Because um, I had to leave early. What, what really strikes me is that uh, we're talking about sustainability for an area that is not going to come to being for 20, 30 years, most likely. Um, at one point, I said to the mayor at the time, we ought to get a bunch of 10-year-olds in here and see if we can create some memory in them for the future so that somebody knows uh, what's going to come because it's, it, we're, we're trying to get something ready for this group of folks that are going to be here working, if, if they're here. And everybody moves so much in this, this world that we now have. Who knows who will be here and what we're preparing for, we don't know. Um, um, it, for me, it's, it's a matter of trying to guess what needs to be done for the future, how best to do it. So many things are going to be invented and changed in the next 10 years that planning for them is, um, is, is difficult. We just sort of plot along, try to do the best we can to figure out a best way to uh, whatever we create, have it be self-sustaining, help it to stay in, in business for a long time. And, um, but it's daunting to know that it's going to take an awful long time before that really starts to, to show. And I think that we really, it's, it's interesting to me that we have young people speaking because they are the people that if they stay in town, or no matter where they go, to have a, uh, a voice in the public process is going to be valuable to wherever they go. And if they stay here, it's going to be, even, it's going to be invaluable to this community. So, um, you know, we were talking about the different uh, uses that we, we want to keep and get lost, you know, in the process, like the use of gas, uh, natural gas, not using natural gas there. Well. You know, I, I couldn't imagine having Chinese restaurants cooking on a convection top, you know, and flipping stuff in a wok and things of the sort. But we are estimating that some way will be found to have these things change in the future. But um, um, my hope is that somebody's going to have the wisdom in the future to make this happen in a wise way, but I don't see it uh, being definitive at this time. I see us trying to add things that we come along. We have some very bright members of that committee mm -hmm. that have a lot of experience. They're, they're teaching subjects that involve this, these products that we're trying to rid ourselves of so they don't create a larger carbon footprint. And I think that, you know, Perhaps, as, as we say, as time goes on, these things will ferret themselves out. Right now, it's just a process of doing the best we can with, with the time we have and the resources and the knowledge that we have. But that's going to grow incrementally in a, in a short time. But the process is going to take a long time. But they're going through all the key concepts to change the language so it would fit. Right. Um, and this is all at, out at the Baylands. But, right. you know, I mean, yeah, some people say 30 years down the road, but they are, you know, within the next 18 months going to be building on the San Francisco end. So it's, it, you well, know, the other thing. It, it will start, the surrounding area will start changing within the next 15 years probably, mm -hmm. even if it's cleared. You uh, talked about building gardens raised beds. Well, when you do that, you have to drive piers. Once you drive piers, if you've already done the sealant, 
and you've, sell, you've sealed as best you think you can, and you drive a pier through that, you've pierced the seal. Now you have leakage. So there's so many things that you have to think about in terms of these things we think would be wonderful. Let's put gardens, we'll put them up above so that they're not in the soil there, we'll have soil above. But the minute you drive the pier, you drive it right through the seal, and you've, you've broken what you built. So there's a lot to go through, but some of the people that are on this committee are very, very savvy, and I think they're going to lead us in good directions. Mm -hmm. And whatever they come up with through the key performance indicators is going to come back to the right. commission for you to review. Yeah. And, and I know your next meeting is on the 19th. What time? 5.30. Thank you. Um, and I'll actually be at that one. <gasps> oh, jeez. Are you not there? What? Are you not going to be available? Well, I have my Christmas party, school district Christmas party uh the 19th, too. Yeah, you know, it was really funny because I had actually mm -hmm. invited everybody who works for the city to my office, or to my house for the Christmas party. Uh -huh. And I had to send out another email saying, oh, sorry, wrong date. <laughs> what is the time of that meeting? 5.30. What? At a different time. Okay. Either is there any other subcommittees that met? Yeah. Oh. We were supposed to meet, but we have to reschedule ours for the... Programs. So we didn't actually meet. I'm not on programs. I don't know who, who's. I think Karen's on programs. Oh, okay. Yeah. You're on programs, right? Yes. And yeah. The 19th. Yeah, the subcommittee. Uh, Wendy sent out an email oh, right. to everybody. I, I thought that was. Yes. Right. I ran the wrong month. That's what's going on. Okay. I'm I'm and she's still checking to make sure. That, I think Andrea is available. Yeah. I just didn't plug. I didn't plug it in. Yeah, I didn't. Cl yeah, well, it was really funny because Clay Dank came down to my office like two seconds after I sent out the email to everybody and he comes, you know, you're busy that day. I said, yeah, my wife will just host it by herself. Don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> it's quite amusing. Yeah. And uh, anyway. Do that with your wife? Uh, <laughs> she says, I mean, you're not going to be home for a night? Great. <laughs> oh. I, oh, your colleagues from work. Yeah, my colleagues will be. I said, yeah. I can get writing done. Anyway, moving on. Next, we have commissioners day in the park evaluate. Now, I don't think we did, I don't think we did the evaluation last night. I think we ran out of time. Oh, day in the park in the Brisbane Derby. Well, we we were meeting. We okay. I think we didn't meet. Yeah, but we've met since then. Yeah. It, on a whole, I think it went very well. It seems like it was a smaller crowd. Mm. Um, the Derby. How was that? Um, well, the. We had some cl um, glitches. Um, cause walkie talkies. Yeah, the walkie talkies. You, we need you raise definitely that up? new need new walkie talkies. Yes, I think I did tell Russ mm -hmm. about getting walkie talkies, and um, the one main volunteer that we had that usually is up at the top, he was out of town, so we had um, uh, another volunteer, and then we had some other staff workers. So. They aren't used to getting the kids lined up so it's ready to go smooth. And so that, that was one little thing. But, you know, it, it did work itself out, and it turned out to be good. The one thing that we talked about day in the park, that we're still having a little problem with the um, sound system. The, the sound, and then we kind of talked about, well, should we do, do the bands? I mean... We pay a lot of money for the bands, and um, nobody really dances to them. I mean, it's like background, so maybe should we should we do the local people, have them come up possibly, right? or do CD, or do, or yeah, do DJ, yeah. and cut the expense, and then maybe doing something else. Um, uh, we talked about having some other events. Um, there was a big thing in Millbrae about the zip line, and several people have... Uh, brought that yes. to our attention so yes. we thought um, possibly maybe we could do that have another have two of the trampolines because that that was like a 45 minute wait for kids the trampoline so we're tossing all this stuff around and i think we'll we'll meet probably earlier in the spring and really settle what what we mm -hmm. we want to do 
both Bonnie and I, we asked for these decorations. We had a theme. And, and <laughs> Russ said he got them, and both Bonnie and I looked at each other and we said... We didn't see him. We didn't see him. But you know what? In the star, when they had the picture... with it's the they're real little, so they were, yeah. Because um, well, we thought, you know, a hometown, and we thought red, white, and blue, mm -hmm. and we didn't see it, and the rest says, oh, no, they had banners across the gazebo. Yeah. We didn't see it. See, we thought they were going to go up like that, but I guess they were on the, the stage. And in that stage, the um, you know, they elevate. You know, that costs, I, uh, uh, we really don't know the whole breakdown of the the. the Budget. budget right. He just kind of throws out a number, but I don't know which we really need to sit down and what's allocated to what, so we know what money we're working with and we're. If you know, give me ten dollars, I can help you with that. Yeah. Yeah. Just don't but, but I, you know, I don't know what those stages, those uh, lifters, maybe they're a thousand. Yeah, I think that was one thing we discussed. Is like we don't know what the budget is, so we don't know how much we're spending on music, and if we decide yeah. we just want to do a mm -hmm. DJ because it's going to be cheaper, then maybe how much money do we have to do something else with? Yeah. Yeah, I tell me, if you give me 10 bucks, I won't tell Russ I gave you the information. Yeah. <laughs> Why did Russ did give me uh, what Leonard and um, some of the stuff around. Ooh. But I, I can, obviously we collect the information as what yeah. it costs for it, so we can yeah. provide that. But we should really have that. If we're looking yeah. at this stuff, just, I, yeah. I, we can give you I, what I would it, like that. It'd make it. Right, we can give you what it cost last year. Yeah. yeah. And it'd be nice to know, break it down by like, you know. The music was this much, yeah. or the jumpy, it was, you know, for the entertainment, non-music this much, for the table rental or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. So we have a better idea next year where we want to spend the money. Yeah. And the tents and, you yeah. know. Makes I sense. Think, I think having something new, like the Melbourne zip line. Yeah. You know, it's been a long standing, I, I, you've heard it before from me, that I have a dream that we'll have a zip line that runs right down Quarry Road. Mm -hmm. And that um, it's not like, gonna be that long the first time. Well, mm -hmm. not the first time, but like in Park City, Utah, where you're walking up the street and they're dropping off people from the ski lift right onto the street. And um, I think that would be pretty exciting to have a zip line coming down through there, and and I, and advertise it as such. I think we'd have a lot of people come in, uh, and I think it would increase our usage for that day. Um, and see how it goes. If people like it, it would be really exciting. Mm -hmm. We'll get you the numbers. Thank you. And then, um, okay, go on. I'm sorry. Next is Festival Alive. So we did receive an email just today. Oh, exciting. From a citizen who participated or who was there. Oh. And their thought was that they were Thank you, disappointed in the mm -hmm. lack of Participate, participatory groups. Mm -hmm. and I think that was a bad timing on our part. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. it, Very short yeah. program. Yeah. Well, we well, we had made contact with the school district, and the school district, you know, said, you know, it is Thanksgiving weekend, and we're not, we're not here available to participate. Well, I think, and Renee and I talked about it a little bit. We had a little debrief that maybe. I mean, I, I don't think it happens often that the Lighting Festival cor corresponds with Thanksgiving weekend, but maybe when it does, we should decide that the a Lighting Festival later. should be the week later. Uh, yep. Yeah. Because then we'll have a chance to get this other people involved yes. with the program. That is what we yeah. decided, too. Yeah. Unfortunately, we decided that when we found out the school district wasn't able to participate a week before the event was, and we already announced it. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. That, that Staff had that same yeah. thought, because that seemed... To limit the number of, you know, and it's it's a thing that you know having the children there. Yeah, it brings out a lot more people, brings right? More people. And I think we suggested at the last meeting that maybe Steve go talk to uh, Donna Hong over at the preschool to see if the preschool kids wanted to do a little presentation, or maybe that was during our meeting when we were talking mm -hmm. about it. Mm -hmm. But I think that's another avenue where we can get more participation yeah. as well. Okay. Either Silver Spot or from the preschool. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And when you have kids, you have parents. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, and that I mean, it was a large crowd. Yeah, after they came in, but then the another carolers yeah, came down. But then another thing, another glitch. I'm sorry to say. The, the, I, I, yeah, we are looking I'm for the, a different sound I'm person. The, the mm -hmm. pain and you know, uh, was yeah, the, the, the sound. And yeah. you know, he's been wonderful all these years. But that was um, another thing that Russ told me is that we will probably be looking for a different yeah, sound person. Yeah, yeah, it's just every year. And, yes. Um, you know. The, You've hit the two points on the person <laughs> email. 
Mm -hmm. This is like our Macy's Day Parade, our Christmas tree lighting, and when they will have the little Don't things you like that. Hardware. Yeah, with that it's goes Macy's off. This, you know, it's just parade. oh my God. Yes. You know, it just. But the tree looks good. Oh yeah. I was out there with Tim Chang on three different occasions. Um, I even went out Saturday night. He called me up. I went out in my pajamas and had it lit, and we kind of redid it. So he did a fabulous yeah, job. Yeah, it, it was pretty this yeah. year. Good. Not two-tone like it's yeah. previously been. We have white and blue on it, don't we? Hmm. Well, it's blue down the middle. Yeah, um, right. But uh, he, he, and he, he took a, a long time up in that tree. Yeah, they look like they were purposely placed in a kind of a yes, nice... Yes, did. Mm -hmm. Design versus yeah. just kind of slapped up there, yeah. like in previous years, just yeah. kind of all yeah. over. Yeah, that so looked very nice. I wanted to thank him for for all his hard work up yeah. and down. Mm -hmm. But fortunately, next year I don't think we're going to have the same problem with the uh, new with Christmas or Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. Yeah, Thanksgiving, well, Thanksgiving was later this year. It was. It was we had later both holidays. Yeah, and uh, that took up a lot of, you know, a lot yeah. of families. Yeah had other things to do. Well, like I was out of town. I didn't come home till uh, late Saturday. In fact, I, I didn't think was Russ supposed to be there. I think he was doing something. You didn't think he was going to be there. He was there, no. Yeah, but he was, so he must have changed some, or else I'm getting another subcommittee. Yeah, so next year it's going to be on December 7th. Oh, good. Yeah, see. This kind That's of better. too close to Thanksgiving. Yeah. yeah. I imagine it only happens... Yeah. Once every seven years. years. But you know, another thing too, I noticed, and I even noticed when I was there, I don't know what's happened since when I first moved here. Everybody used to light up their stars on the there's hill. Not that many there's stars. not that many stars. Now, I don't know what's going on And out there's there. a photo contest this year. Yeah. Get your stars your swords up because there's a photo contest that we are for the cover of the history book that yeah. we're trying to have pictures oh, of the right. stars. Yeah. But yeah. I don't know if people are having a difficult time. I, I, some somebody can come out and um, help them put their star up. But um, yeah. I have someone that get does my house up. decoration. Yeah, because we're not getting on the roof. Yeah, yeah. Good idea, Bonnie. You you guys shouldn't get up there. <laughs> I'm saying there are people that would come out. Yeah. yeah. Knowing so he's saying no, no, I can do it. Don't worry. And I says no, you can't. I don't know. Maybe some of the lions will come out. You know, they're always good. They probably at would helping that and service. Mm -hmm. I, I know it, in the years past when you used to go down there and buy a Christmas tree, they used to deliver it. They climbed all my stairs and put it up for me. I don't know if they still do that anymore, but. Yeah. Well, maybe after this weekend we'll see more stars up because it's you know the weekend after when people are back yeah. in town. Yeah. So yeah. So people, don't get people were asking online today, where can I get a star? You and know where you um, at, Bob Wilson. They can get them at 480 Monterey. Yes. Mm -hmm. and, and the Christmas tree lot too, I think. He was making them down there. I know. Okay. Um, I know that Allison and Bob Wilson have them at the house at 480 Monterey. Yeah. There's a donation I'll bucket. I'll talk to Caroline. For anybody who wants to yeah. make a donation. Um, but you just pick up the stars right in the front yard. You don't have to ring the doorbell. Although they, people asked, is there a password? And I said, no, but you have to be a card-carrying star. A verifiable Brisbane night. <laughs> um, you have to live in Brisbane to get a free star. There you go. But you can make a donation. Mm -hmm. Pay for future stars. Next, we have Dog Park. This is something that um, Jamie asked us to put on. Well, I don't know if you've been over to the dog park, but um, reseeding took place, and there a, a good part of it is really lovely. Uh, there's still some areas that, just by nature of that part of the park, I think we have a little spring under there that it, the grass took in many places. Um, we'll, we'll deal with that as time goes on. But the entrance is terrific. Um, new uh, sidewalk laid so that people can get in there safely. And uh, it not only looks good, it feels really safe. And that hasn't felt like that for many, many years. Is so that over by um, Purcell Murray or down, both sides. down here? On both the, sides. Both sides, great. So it's, it's and, and people are happy. There's another thing they're happy about, and, um, and they've said so, that we've had the issue with the 
multiple dog walkers coming into town and having as many as 10 dogs at a time and then others of us just driving up seeing the gang and leaving because it doesn't feel safe because usually if a bunch of dogs travel together in a vehicle and then go play together they're a pack and uh, it, it doesn't provide a lot of safety and I've heard from vets that that's where they have you know, they have a lot of referrals from accidents that happen um, with at dog parks and on the way to dog parks in these vehicles so now we have signs that are um, uh, posted on both ends of the dog park uh, three dogs to each individual and uh, I met some folks there the other day who were saying that they had stopped coming there because they just couldn't put up with it any longer and they were really happy about this and uh, I really had hoped I would hoped that uh, they would have felt comfortable enough to come or just drop us a note if they have certain feelings about it because it it makes the staff feel really good that they have achieved um, a change to the better and it sure is looking a lot better now it's feeling a lot safer and you can go in there at almost any time and feel like you can play with your dog and not be overrun so big a big improvement yeah, it's not muddy there like it used to be. It's not. There's some areas that are going to be. Well, I mean, when the entrance, when you walk no, in sometimes. No, yeah. I think that's going to, I think they may even do a little more drainage mm. uh, adjustment. But uh, that takes time to see how that's going to settle and see how the rains come. And, and, so and who did that work? The city did. Oh, okay. Fabulous. The city did. Um, they did a really good job. I did know that. Um anything about little dogs here no you know the thing the thing about little dogs is that the area that was talked about being designated for little dogs is that area where there may be an underground spring mm -hmm. because yeah. it gets really muddy and those little dogs are just yeah. going to waddle in it and people aren't <laughs> going to go there and they personally confidentially they said on the side we like going to the city park we feel safer and little dogs can easily be picked up by some of the larger dogs as they're playing. Lots of the small dogs play right along and they're fine and others do not and they're happy to be on leash over at the, the city park. Uh, sometimes their owners I think may let them off leash. I have they do quite a bit. But you know I think that they're pretty careful that if we looked at the numbers of people that go over there with their small dogs there really aren't that many and um, in terms of making a big change at the dog park for the purpose of a group of small dogs that may not even use that area because it's so muddy almost 100% of the time um, one of the things that's really liked about our dog park is the fact that you can play a distance your dogs get a full run you can throw things a distance and they get a chance to run and once you truncate that uh, you, you really change it and people saw that when the place was being reseeded and it was fenced off half halfway or three quarters of the way while we were working on different areas people saw the change in in how they could use the park they really do like having the length of the park so, you know, I don't, I, mm. I, I don't know that it's a, is it big an issue to have people at the community park just walking their dog or s sitting around at their bench with a couple of small dogs. They don't seem to cause any trouble. They don't seem to bite anybody. They don't seem to get anybody's way. And my impression is, on the whole, that the owners pick up after them. And... Um, and I go down there purposely to walk around and see them and to see how that feels, knowing that there's the issue about should we rebuild, you know, that area of the dog park, which I think is going to be excessive and not necessary, and we won't get these people walking over there. Um, I mean, the challenge with the having dogs off leash at the dog at the community park is that we have had a couple of complaints of people with small children whose children are afraid of dogs so when the dog is off leash there's small child dog conflict so we encourage people to keep their dogs on leash I understand that uh, and also if you take a look at the dogs 
you know, they're, they're 12 inches high at the most, maybe six, seven, eight pounds. Um, very few bigger dogs, and the bigger dogs that I've seen over there are quite elderly. People don't want to walk them all the way over here. There may be people that don't have vehicles and just live in that immediate area. I know some that are in the, um, in the condos there, and they just walk their dog around the park, and that's about as much as the dog can do. And um, I don't know, I, 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 I still think that changing the dog park at this time is premature, and we just watch it a little bit longer and, you know, keep reminding the small dog owners that if they want to use the, the park, they want to use the community park, if they just use it responsibly and, and accede to the needs of people with children, because there are children that are afraid. I mean, the bottom line is the children aren't in the dog park unless they come with their families and they have a dog. The children are in the community park. That's where they're playing. And so... Yeah, I mean, if people are responsible, yeah. that's always the yeah. big question in life. We, we have that problem still up at Lipman School Field because um, they do a lot of uh, pee out there, and there's always somebody out there with their dog off-leash throwing them, and then they see the kids all coming down. They have to run the mile around there. And yes. a lot of times they don't clean up after the, <laughs> their dogs. And then they... that. Uh, field is utilized a lot with soccer, mm -hmm. so they have a big issue. But that uh, a lot of people and and it has a sign. Maybe we need uh, better signs that said, you know, no dogs there during school hours. I mean, there's really always I somebody see down them, there. Quite frankly, when I drive by, oh, no. they're down there all the time. It takes them walking up in the back, and I see dogs on that field. I'm surprised because yeah. I see the sign. Yeah, they they don't care. Well. I, I, I don't know how people really do feel about it. I am, it's a concern. But, um, you know, there are people that, that when they hear this issue of the dogs uh, peeing, you know, on the fields, um, have m much more of an issue with the humans leaving their waste along Quarry Road. And your dog's going along and coming out of there. And the dog, what the dog will do was roll in it because mm -hmm. they love to change their scent. And they come out with this horrendous perfume that requires, a, you know, a full bath and scrubbing to change. And um, I often think that we need some kind of uh, bathroom facility because people that are homeless and that are living in that area. And if you walk up Quarry Road and you just, all you have to do is investigate between the bushes and you'll see mattress clothing um, residue of, of foodstuffs and not far up and I'm, you know l less than a tenth of a mile up query road you'll see that you don't have to go all the way up to see this so I'm, I'd be really happy to see get a lot of that turned over to the community park area because I think we may not have as many people residing there because once they're there, and they also tend to maybe uh, using or abusing substances, and they don't then turn around and walk down to the city park to use the, the facilities there. More, more issues for, more day, for other days. <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> plenty, we have plenty of issues that we need to deal with as a community. Um, staff reports, program report. Do you have anything to say? <laughs> I just wanted to mention that we offered, we, um, these last couple of weeks, we've offered two new classes, and they seem to be doing pretty well. One in particular, uh, one is a, um, is a yoga class that's actually being held in the community center, and I think it's been a little bit more convenient for, for people than just the, uh, the ones up at Mission Blue. And it's like um, Mondays, in, it's in the mornings, Mondays and Friday in the morning from 8 to 9, or, and or Tuesdays and Thursdays from 12 to 1, and you can attend, you get a punch pass, and you can attend everyone so I've had about nine people sign up and that's a lot for a brand new class mm -hmm. uh, the other one is the uh, I know I'm going to say it wrong is the Caparera okay. class and uh, that one's uh, starting out pretty good too I think we need to take a look at it because there's a lot of interest at a little different ages and a little different format than what we presented and I think that the instructor is very open to maybe continuing that and maybe adjusting that a little bit but that's 
that's done well too. Other than that, we're we are in the middle of winter camp sign up, so that's what's going on. That class, what what is it? Capoeira. And and what is that? Well, it's a combination: Brazilian martial arts, uh, African roots, uh, dance. Uh, um, Kicks, escapes, acrobatics, and and dance, and all this combined. And what's the age group that? Uh, right now, they they're offering a class for third to fifth graders, but we have some kids that are like in the first and second grade that's okay. very very interested. Sixth to eighth graders and adults. It's the younger kids that seems to be the most interested in it. I think they, they used to more? offer a BS after school, and now it's coming through the Park and Rec program. So a lot of people are just continuing. What was offered at BES last year? Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so that's the latest. Thank you. Commission matters. Written communications. And commission calendar. Well, we have future agenda items on there, or not this time? Um, we'll talk about the pool, pool fees again. Cause we I wanted to talk about... Um, so loud. Bully training for staff. Yes, we've talked to the school district about mm -hmm. that. And I, I mean, I've personally had a conversation with the superintendent, and what she said is that when they are ready to roll it out, um, they will keep us in mind and we will be able to participate. Okay, because I would like, you know, everyone that's dealing with the kids to go through the course so they're right. at least you know, aware of bullying and can prevent bullying. And uh, Absolutely. And, you know, she and I had the conversation. Okay. Great. Um, it's just that what she had told me is that the school district was still in the <coughs> train the trainer process. Mm -hmm. And when they get out from train the trainer to train the people at BES, yeah. that we teacher. would participate. And, you know, the bright side of it is that the person who runs our after school program is, um, a, is employed by the school district. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay, great. Yeah. Joe Medina. Oh, okay. Yeah, because yeah, I think, you know, Russ and Steve should take it. Yep. You. That's what, and I told um, uh, the superintendent that if there's an additional cost to have our staff trained, we would more than happy to pick up that cost. Okay. So thanks, Stuart. Is it possible for commissioners to attend any of those trainings? Um, I'd have to check with the superintendent because it's, it's coming through the school district in their funding, but I can check. It's a good program. Mm -hmm. It's a very good. Do we thank you. Do we know? Um, uh, it was the bullying centered. I mean, you, you reported on this in, a, in, a, in an email that went to other people. This is going back about a month ago, perhaps. And um, I, I had gotten a few comments from parents about um, stuff going on at the after school program up by BES, you know, the rec after school program. That they felt the kids were getting bullied and people were leaving the program because they felt their kids were getting bullied there. And the challenge is that no one is telling us. Right. I think because I'm on the commission, I know these people, they're, you know. Right. I mean, because I, I've actually heard from the school district that teachers may have seen some bullying in our after-school program. And I was, you know, in conversations with the superintendent, I said, oh, who? And she, her comment to me was, you know, that she was going to let the teacher come forward and talk to us. Mm -hmm. And we are still Nothing waiting. Okay. I'll try and encourage the people to talk to because, anybody. Yeah, it's, it's, the challenge is... If we're not aware of it, it's hard for us to do something. And I mean, we are observant. We, you know, our thing is, you know, our first priority is safety of the children. Mm -hmm. So, you know, obviously, we have we're very aware of physical altercations, but you know, we may not hear everything that's being said. Right. And I think people are maybe afraid to come forward, so they don't want their child singled out. You know, if people are not trained in how to prevent bullying or no bullying, they may become bullies themselves by singling these kids out, right? So that kind of my thought process is we should get the, you know, the adults that are with the kids trained in bullying so they understand right. from the kids' perspective what they perceive as bullying so they can know how to prevent it and be aware of themselves if they're bullying other kids. Do you know if there was any subject that was, if it was related to? Picking on particular students over something, and it could be come down to just a put down. Uh, but Lipman, it's the same program that they're going to be um, implementing at BES and Panorama. Any little thing, and it goes to a level. You have to write up and life skill. We drill these kids every day in the announcements. I mean, yeah. there's there. 
in, in the families and in the, we have families on Wednesdays and we also have class meetings and that is brought up. I mean, the, the kids get tired of hearing about it, but we have to keep doing it. Well, I think having workshops on bullying is a good thing because I think that bullying goes on at any age, in any age group, uh, in offices where you work, mm -hmm. in clubs that you belong to. Um, adults are bullied just as much as children are. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and uh, disrespected and put down and sometimes just walk away yeah. shrugging. And, and I think um, when kids see that, that their parents are feeling the same way, I think it just exacerbates the problem. So maybe a training about bullying that doesn't just go towards the students, but is an overall city uh, program or a city presentation, perhaps. Yeah, I can check and see. The school sometimes does a presentation just on bullying for parents, so I can check and see if we've done one this year or not. Usually up at Lippman, but it'd be open to the public. But maybe we could co-sponsor it with could the go to the, web, the, the website too. Anybody can look at the website and see what it is, what the policy is, and yeah, what, what we consider bullying up at the district. Anyway. Well, yeah, we're we're waiting yeah. for the BES to be yeah. ready to roll it out. Yeah. Okay. How about having something that's just not related only to schools? but it's related across the board, you know, um, something that the city sponsors on bullying. I mean, if that might be one of the things you may want to look at in your goal setting, if that's yes. something you want to do. Yeah. Um, you know, the challenge is always, I think, the, what the school district does really well and what um, Renee talked about is that they emphasize it on a very regular basis. Whereas if you do a one-time class, you know, you'll get those people who are most interested in it here, you're not going to get maybe the people who most need it. I mean, it's a challenge on how you do it as a, as a community. I think the interesting thing about that is when you do a presentation um, that the people that aren't here are there. And these things being repeated on the television, a group like that, people are going to hear it and it becomes part of the culture then that the city on the whole has a practice that we don't approve of bullying and then I think that that filters down to the children through families through clubs through organizations as well as through their school so it's, they're not just getting the message to the school which is probably doing a fabulous job but it also becomes part of the community uh, culture that this yeah. is you know a non-bullying environment no. that I mean, we live in that could be something you take up in your school setting so don't buy your house here do I have a motion to adjourn? What? Do we do commission calendars, or are we going to do that later? No. On the side? Well, we're going to do, the next meeting is January 22nd, okay. and there's another one on January 26th. Yeah. And then the, the items that would be on would be the um, pool fees. Would be the big item that we talk about the next. The hoofies. Pool. Pool fees. Pool. Oh, I the who? Make the hoofies. <laughs> the hoofies. <laughs> the hoofies, yes. The what? Christmas time. Oh, God. Okay. Motion Ooh. to adjourn then. Ooh. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 I'm sorry, I forgot to call. Oh. No, 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 I was I, I just know how busy you are. Yeah. That was the issue I wanted to talk about. Oh, the bullet. Oh, okay. yeah. Um, something came up some time ago that um, oh, oh, oh. 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 just the beginning of the second. Just an opportunity to change. January 22nd, I got the. Thank you. Have a nice day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Presentation. Yeah.